Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Florida Vision Technologies uh, presents Zoom with us. Today is going to be a pretty special episode. So before we get into that, I just want to talk about a little bit about myself. You know, I am visually impaired, and as somebody who was born with 20-20 vision and lost my sight at an early age, I had to learn something called Braille. Um, it was very important for me. If I didn't learn it, uh, you know, today I wouldn't be able to be the professional that I am. I probably wouldn't have been able to get through school. I mean, Braille is so important for people who are very low vision or totally blind uh, to be literate. You know, a lot of people always tell me, you know, what about using screen readers? And I always tell them, well, using a screen reader doesn't allow you to uh, be able to read, to learn how to spell. When you're depending on uh, things reading to you, you're not seeing uh, the format of the text. You're not seeing the structure of the the paragraphs and, and the text that's on the page. So reading Braille is very important. And with saying that, today we are going to be talking about a couple of Braille devices uh, that are designed and made by HIMS. one being the QBraille XL and the other one being the BrailleSense Polaris. And with that, I have uh, my good friend here. His name is Mike Tyndall, and Mike Tyndall works with HIMS. Mike, how are you? Good. good morning, Jose. I'm doing very well, and I appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I appreciate you joining us today, Mike. So, Mike, if you can, uh, you know, before we get into our demonstrations, what, what's going on in your neck of the woods? How, how are you doing during these uh, challenging times? Well, these times are a little bit different. You know, I uh, live in St. Paul, Minnesota, and we, um, we're not quite open back up yet as far as our um, restaurants and that kind of thing. We're uh, actually mm -hmm. planning to start reopening but we're doing it a little bit slower here than what people are down in the south unfortunately yeah, I, I think know. or maybe fortunately who knows but uh yeah we're supposed to open back up on june 1st with like 25 percent capacity for restaurants and it has to be outside dining yeah. um i haven't had a beard trim in forever and so my <laughs> beard is like crazy long but uh, yeah, yeah we're just adapting in these times yeah, very nice. Uh, I was fortunate enough, you know, here in South Florida, uh, where the hotspot really is in the state of Florida, they just recently opened um, small businesses, so like barbershops and things of that nature. So after not ha having a haircut for two months, I was finally able to go and get one this past Monday. I mean, granted, I had to wear a mask, that, so that was a little little strange, right? Me and the barbers were, were wearing a mask, and at some point of the haircut, I had to remove the mask from the right side a little bit so you could get my sideburns on the right, and then remove it from the left a little bit so you could get my sideburns on the left. So it was a, a different, strange, unusual experience for me. So I mean, you know, I hadn't even thought here. about that, Jose. <laughs> yeah. So just move the mask a little bit. Okay, yeah, got it. Yeah, got it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so Mike, uh, you know, so tell us a little bit about you. Like, how did you come uh, to be with the company HIMS? You know, give us a little background about yourself. Well, you know, my life has been, I've had a very good life. Um, born and raised in Florida, so I am a Floridian. Hello, um, Floridian. Went to, went to public, public school. Um, and I, I decided kind of on my own at an early age that I was going to be, uh, you know, one of those blind guys who did everything in my power to help other blind people. And um, took my first college class up in Daytona and did that. And then um, about a year later, way back in the day, some of you may remember, uh, when Freedom Scientific merged, um, Blazy Engineering, Hinter Joyce, and Arkenstone, they merged to make the company Freedom Scientific. And I was privileged enough to join them uh, shortly after the merger, and I did tech support. And then about three months later, I became hardware escalations tech support. I was the only guy, and so um, that was a lot of fun. I worked with that company for five years and uh, did a lot of, you know, trained a lot of folks in tech support, monitored phone calls, um, did a lot with them. <clears throat> and then I, <clears throat> in 2005, I left Freedom Scientific and joined the National Federation of the Blind up in Baltimore and um, worked there for a couple of years where I, I worked with every piece of technology ever made for the blind. And that was, that was a lot of fun. And then um, in 2007, I joined HumanWare. I really kind of missed 
working for one company. And what I really wanted to do was travel the country and train and do workshops for teachers and, and, and students. So in 2007, I joined Humanware, worked for them doing that job up until 2018. In 2018, um, I left Humanware, joined HIMS as their national training manager. And, you know, as I've helped, uh, you know, talk about and kind of figure out keystrokes and design and that kind of thing for a lot of products that you see today, it's just, it's, it's kind of heartwarming when I think about my life and I see students who started off in kindergarten and now they've graduated college and, you know, um, and I've kind of followed a lot of them throughout their education journey. And it, it's truly an honor for me to be able to have done the things I've done in my life and That's continue awesome. to do it. I remember, Jose, the first time I met you, I think I showed you your first Braille display. <laughs> yeah, you sure did. Yeah, my, my, my very first Braille display that I got to play with and learn how to use. And, uh, you know, from there, I uh, slowly but gradually uh, expanded into other products. But, Mike, you know, I could totally relate with what you're talking about, about uh, teaching kids and, and following them and seeing the progress that they're making from, you know, from a young age throughout their, their education and then into the profession. You know, I was just telling one of my TVIs yesterday, uh, teachers of the visually impaired, um, I was just telling them yesterday that I love uh, working with the younger kids because it's so funny, even though they're like 13, 14, 12, uh, you know, one of, you know, a couple of my kids are eight years old. They all have like these different personalities and they're just so unique in their own ways, you know? So it's, it's awesome to see them grow and develop and then turn into the, the young adults that they're turning into. I, I love that part about this job. Absolutely. It's great playing with the different technologies. Awesome. But you know, working with the people one-on-one -on -one is, is, that's, that's, you know, that's, it's kind of where the rubber meets the road, you know, I mean, that is, that is, the technology is great, but if you don't teach someone how to use it, what good is the technology? That's true. That is true. And this is the best time to have a visual impairment or any type of disability because there's so many different assistive technology products, adaptive technology products, whatever terminology what you want to use. There's so many different options out there that allow people like you and myself who are visually impaired uh, do certain things uh, the same way a sighted person would do it, but we just do it a little differently, right? So, you know, Absolutely. People, they're going to read print, we're going to read Braille. Um, so, yeah, so it's, it's an amazing time to, to be living with a, a disability or a visual. Absolutely. Person. So you ended up in Humanware, and then and now, you know, today's uh, presentation is about HIMS. So when did you end up with HIMS? Join HIMS in 2018. Um, it was it was kind of funny. I probably shouldn't tell this, but I will. It was it was interesting that on April Friday the thirteenth, I'd been with Hims for you know um, eleven eleven great years, um, and I really enjoyed um, all of that time with with Humanware. And on Friday the thirteenth of April, I actually left and joined Hims on uh, Monday. April the 16th, and that happens to be two of my best friend's birthdays, and so I left Humanware on one and started with him the, the following Monday, and it was interesting for me, you know, because when, you, when you've been around technology and you, you know, one nice thing about, you know, note takers and that kind of thing is, is that a lot of them, you know, are similar in the way that they operate. There are some differences, but there's also some similarities, and, um, you know, it was interesting because I just kind of left one company and went right into the next one. And it was just kind of like, you know, it wasn't a big transition for me. I just continued um, doing what I do. And, and um, yeah. There you go. So what do you do for HIMS and what is HIMS for, so for people who are listening or people who are watching on YouTube that don't know what it is? Absolutely. So HIMS is... Um, Human Interface Management System is what HIMS stands for, and um, HIMS has been making uh, products. The actual um, parent company of HIMS is a company in South Korea called Selvis Healthcare, and they manufacture the low vision and hardware and blindness hardware products. 
um, that Hims actually Hims Inc actually sells. Um, and we are we are based in Austin, Texas. Uh, back when we uh, here in the United States, when Selvis Healthcare um, brought these products to market, they actually had a, a, a distributorship in the United States. And then in 2008, I want to say 2008, all my years run together, but I believe it was around 2008, they actually um, came to the United States and opened an office in Austin, Texas. Nice. And so, nice. Uh, you know, we are the U.S. operations um, called Hims Inc. for Selvis Healthcare. And where were they like, you know, you're saying the, the, you're the U.S. office, so where are they originally based out of, out of is what, South Korea? Uh, or? They, they're originally based out of, um, I'm going to try this word, I'll probably butcher it, Dushan, Dushan, <laughs> <laughs> South Korea. Um, for anyone who uh, heard that and heard me butcher it, I apologize. But, you know, we're very fortunate because we do have a person who used to work for um, the office in Austin, Texas, Jenny Axler. Oh, who actually amazing. moved over to South Korea. She and I were talking, I think she's been there now for like six, seven years. Wow. And um, so she's actually living over there, doing a lot of software testing, um, you know, managing the beta list, um, getting software ready to launch. Um, you know, that is kind of, uh, she does all of our international tech support. Yeah. And um, she's just a great resource to have. Very cool. Very cool. So let's get into it, Mike. What, what products are we going to be Absolutely. talking about today? I, re, I mean, I, I guess we already know, right? I announced it in the beginning, but let's go into the Cubrel XL. What is the Cubrel XL and who benefits from that product? You know, the Cubrel XL is a very, um, I don't want to use the word very unique because I guess that's really not good terminology, but it is a unique device um, that is simply one of a kind. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. What we've done with the Cubrail, we call it the Cubrail XL the 40th. And um, actually, so, so it is a, if you imagine what we traditionally know um, as a Braille display, and unfortunately for those of you who are sighted, let me just say I am doing this entire presentation today from my Polaris. And so being totally blind, I am never sure uh, like what shows up well in the video and what doesn't. So I just kind of like um, did not even show you a, a cube rail because I don't know if you'll be able to see it. So we're just going to talk yeah, about for, it. Because for, those I know I can... it on, for those of you watching on YouTube, there will be pictures of uh, the cube rail on there. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, so yes. yeah, let's keep going to the, the cube rail. But so, yeah, so the Cuba, as I mentioned, has a 40 cell braille display. Um, it is a unit that has no speech. It is only braille. Um, and it's, it's, it's one of its main objectives is to be able to connect to devices, to drive those devices. And when I say to somebody, you know, what is a braille display? And I tell people a braille display and a keyboard is a sighted person's computer monitor and computer keyboard. That's how we think of it. So that Braille display and that, and that keyboard of the Q-Braille is what's driving whatever device that you have connected. Um, and I want to talk about that for a little bit, just not to dive way in, but I, don't, I also want to make it as clear as I can. So we call it Q-Braille because if you imagine a QWERTY computer keyboard, we have taken all of the modifier keys of a QWERTY keyboard, things like your control key, function key, windows key, alt key, space bar, alt, function, control, right arrow, down arrow, you know, left arrow, up arrow, all your keys on the keyboard, uh, your tab key, your shift key, all of your function keys, home in, page up, page down, insert, delete, all of those keys are physically on the cube rail. And what makes it so nice in education is that we have taken all of the QWERTY keys, the alphabet and the numbers, out of the keyboard 
but we've replaced it with a Perkins style keyboard. So now you have all of your modifier keys with a Perkins style keyboard. So if you're a teacher and you're teaching someone how to use a screen reader like JAWS or NVDA, you don't have to worry about what, what braille command do I use to close an app? How do you close an app on a PC? It's Alt F4. So on that Cubro keyboard, you simply press Alt F4. How do I save a document? It's Control S or F12. You know, there's a million different ways in Windows to do whatever you want to do. So we've allowed, um, you know, students not have to memorize braille keys versus keyboard commands to operate their screen reader. And then another big thing that we've done is we um, are, you can connect the device to up to six devices, Bluetooth, as well as a USB connection. So for example, you may have it connected to a PC via Bluetooth or USB, and then connect it to an iPhone or an iPad, an Android device, maybe even a second computer via Bluetooth. And you can actually jump through those connections uh, with just one key, with, with, with pressing two keys simultaneously. Um, you can jump between your different connections. And the other thing that we've done that is different is that we have, when you connect it, you have either two USB connections, which is it's a physical one port connection, but it's two separate connections, or two Bluetooth connections, in that the keyboard and the Braille display are connected separately. Not to confuse you, it's not difficult. But the power of that is, is that the keyboard itself, the computer sees it as a traditional USA 101 keyboard. And not only can it be used as a Windows Microsoft keyboard, you can also go into the options of the cube braille and you can change it to a Mac layout so that you can control a Mac with voiceover or a computer running Microsoft and a screen reader um, all within the same device. And so it's, it's, it's truly a one of a kind product. And um, for anyone who would love to see one, make sure that you contact Florida Reading and Lisa, Jose, the team there will be happy to um, get one into your hands. So, Mike, we have a question in the chat. Um, so someone's asking, uh, you know, you mentioned that it works with Windows and that it works with Mac. Now, we're seeing that a Windows keyboard, the layout of a Windows keyboard is going to be a little different than a Mac keyboard. For example, to the left of the space bar, you're going to have your control function Windows alt key. To the left of a, space, uh, to the left of a Mac computer space bar, um, keyboard, you're going to have function, uh, what is it, function, control, option, command. So Good when job. You alter that. When you alter that uh, between the Mac keyboard and the Windows keyboard, how does that react? It reacts exactly as we would expect it to because that's actually what you're doing. You go into the options menu of the Cubrail, and there is a menu in there that says keyboard layout. And your choices are Microsoft keyboard and Apple keyboard. And it exactly does what you just said, Jose. So it changes all of the keys internally from being a Microsoft keyboard to a Mac keyboard and vice versa. So if I want to use control option right arrow, for example, or I want to do my voiceover commands with shift down arrow to interact or VO shift up arrow to stop interacting when I'm using a Mac. Um, and if I just like talk to whoever people said, that's all Mac operator keystrokes yeah. um, th that's for a different day. But, but, but basically what I'm saying is, is that it totally allows you to utilize the device as you would expect to use it with a Microsoft keyboard for Windows and an Apple keyboard for the Mac. Very nice. Very nice. So, so now we know we can use the QBrel 40 or QBrel XL 40 as a, a keyboard. Um, what's the main benefit of that device? So, I mean, having a, a keyboard is nice and all, but like, what are we gonna primarily going to use that for? Well, your primary do well. I mean, the, the, the keyboard is a big part of it, but of course, the major thing that we're going to be doing with the device is we're going to be reading Braille. 
writing Braille. And the nice thing about the devices is that when you're writing in contracted Braille, the device itself is actually doing the back translation from Braille to print into your document. And it's happening in real time, um, no matter what screen reader that you're using. And then another, another benefit of the device is it does have some standalone applications on it. For example, we have a daisy reader, we have a notepad, and inside of that notepad, you're able to write um, files in TXT as well as BRF format. But then we can also read several different types of files. We can read DOC, DOCX, which is Microsoft Word. We can read PDF files. Um, we can read RTF and TXT files. Um, so, you know, a lot of files that you may get that someone hands you in a meeting, if you're a professional, for example, you're able to read those files directly on the, on the QBrel itself. And then, as I mentioned, the daisy reader. So you may be a person that enjoys reading bookshare books. Um, you can get those in daisy format, which is a navigable uh, format. You're able to jump by heading or by page or, you know, that kind of thing, depending on how the book is marked up. But then you can also uh, read BRF books and all of your bookshare books that you may want to read, um, um, you know, in education. Very nice. So, I mean, I'm going to assume that it's compatible with voice or on a Mac because obviously that's going to be the main screen on the Mac. But uh, Windows, you know, we have different options out there to use as a screen reader. Um, what, what screen readers is the, the QBrel XL compatible with on the Windows side of things? It's compatible with um, pretty much all of the major screen readers that are out there, NVDA, um, of course, Narrator, uh, absolutely with JAWS. Um, so, you know, primary, all, of the, all of the main screen readers, it even works with... Um, uh, Serotech SA to go back in the day. Some of you may remember that program. It's oh, still yeah. popular oh, with yeah. a lot of people. And oh, yeah. uh, Mike Calvo, um, who was also a Floridian, um, way back in the day, started uh, System Access, a uh, Freedom Box way back. Um, that you know, it, it's 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 very. Um, it's it's as I said, it, it it really works with you know almost you know any scenario that you put the cube rail in, it's going to work. Mm. I'm guessing it's going to work with mobile devices too, like iPads and Galaxy tablets. iPads, and iPhone, Android devices um, of, of any type, yes. Very nice. So it's a good device for both someone who's in an education setting and someone who's in a professional setting. I mean, even somebody who needs a Braille display just to be at home from leisure time. I, I mean, I, I, it looks really nice um, for those of you who are excited. If you look at the screen, you'll see what it looks like. I mean, it's a very, very nice design. Um, you know, it comes with a little uh, case, a little rubber case that you put on the device in the box. It's really nice design. Very nice design. Very cool. And I'll just also quickly say it does use USB-C for charging. So the most, you know, current, up-to-date, mainstream, uh, a lot of devices now are going to USB-C. And uh, the QBrel has done that. You can also plug the QBrel into the computer, and you can access files that are on your SD card. You can move things around very easily just by copying and pasting from the computer to the QBrel and vice versa. Very nice. So we have another question in the chat. Um, does it work with one-handed mode for people who only have use of one hand? It absolutely does, yes. We do have a one-handed mode feature. Um, it also works very well with for those of you who are familiar with sticky keys. Um, you know, you may not be able to press Alt F4, so sticky keys allows you to press the Alt key and then the F4 key individually, um, and those, that's a Windows command. We do support sticky keys as well as a traditional one-handed mode for Braille. Cool, good stuff. What's the price on that, Mike? Uh, the retail price is three thousand one hundred ninety-five dollars, thirty-one ninety-five. And does it come with any type of warranty or anything like that? It does. It comes with a year's warranty. Yes. Very cool. Very cool. So yeah, if any of you guys are interested in the QBrel XL, I mean, you're more than welcome to go ahead and shoot us an email, give us a call, and we'll get you going with that. 
Um, let's move on to the Brailsons Polaris. Let's, let's do that. So you were saying earlier that you're actually using the Brailsons Polaris to be on this Zoom call right now, right? I am. The only machine that I have in front of me today as far as technology is my Brailsons Polaris. Um, and I, I, I told, you know, one of the really nice things I like about the Brailsons Polaris and you know, computers and those kind of things today is how it is in this in this pandemic is how that it is really allowing us to use virtual technology um, to you know do distance learning to teach to have meetings. You know, we're all using this technology in a way that you know a lot of us maybe even thought could not be done, or if it could be done, it was going to be challenging to do it. And, um, you know, we are able today to do that um, because of the technology that, that we're using. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's wonder. I mean, I've been doing Zoom meetings and that kind of thing for a number of years, but I've done it more in the last two months than ever, as I'm sure yeah. we all have. Yeah. Up. And, and, you know, recently, you know, with the whole uh, COVID-19 situation, I've, I've, been, I've been doing a lot of training, a lot of demonstrations remotely. You know, if I'm working with a student or a TBI or someone from one of the organizations that we work with, I, you know, I utilize Zoom. I get the Browsons Polaris. I connect to Zoom with the Browsons Polaris. So the teachers who are sighted can see what I'm doing on the device so they're able to help their students. And you guys are going to see that in a little bit. Mike's going to share his screen and you're going to see his Browsons Polaris. Now, uh, Mike, if you can go ahead, just give us some uh, information, some background on the Browsons Polaris. That'd be really great. Absolutely. So the previous product to the Brailsons Polaris was a product, and we actually still sell them. They're called the Brailsons U2. And, um, you know, that, that device was kind of your traditional uh, note-taking device running on the Windows CE platform. And then um, we actually came out with the Brailsons Polaris and comparing it to the U2 for this. So those of you who may be U2 users, um, it's a little, it's quite a bit thinner than the U2. But one of the nice things about the Polaris is that it's actually running on an Android platform. So what does that mean? That means if I'm, Braille, if I'm using a U2, for example, there is no way that I can run Zoom on my Brailsense U2 because uh, when we, you know, we were using products with Windows CE, and basically if we didn't design it or if it wasn't a program designed to run on the device specifically, um, it could not run. But when we think about the Android operating system, what that's done is it's totally opened up endless possibilities for people to be able to um, use the Brelsons Polaris using Android because they are able to download third-party apps. And so if you think about, uh, you know, your smartphone, you think about iPhones, you think about Android, Samsung phones, all of those devices. Um, when you think about those devices, you are able to download third-party apps, things like Zoom, things like, um, you know, other education apps that you may need in, in, in your specific school. Um, if we think about, you know, things for entertainment, maybe like Apple Music or Pandora or, you know, um, any app that is accessible will certainly run on the device. And that is the biggest difference between the Polaris um, and, and the other devices that, 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 were be, that, that come before it. Um, we have two models of the Polaris. We have the Polaris 32 as well as the Polaris Mini. The nice thing about the Polaris 32 is that you have 32 cells of Braille compared to, to 20 cells of Braille. And one of the nice things I like about the Polaris, the big Polaris, is um, it is it is you have a USB-A connection, so you're able to plug in a traditional thumb drive. Where on the Polaris Mini, because everything is compact. It has a USB-C port, and it uses a micro SD card compared to a traditional USB, I mean, uh, SD card. 
And also that micro SD card on the Polaris Mini is actually inside the battery compartment. So certainly in education and professional um, you know, settings, I always recommend the Polaris because it's got more Braille cells under your fingers and it's just kind of the keys are spaced further apart. Um, it's definitely, you know, uh, my, not just because it's my pick, but I think in certain situations, um, you know, for someone maybe who's traveling a ton, the Polaris Mini might do it for you. Um, you know, so different, different options for different people. Yeah. And, you know, for those of you who might be using a BrailleSense U2 right now, I mean, if you were to see the BrailleSense Polaris or the BrailleSense Polaris Mini, it's going to look very familiar because it's going to have a lot of the same things that your BrailleSense U2 has. You know, it has your perfect soft keyboard, it's going to have your space bar, your function keys, um, it's going to have uh, your media keys that you're used to. So it's, it's, it's not going to be a huge learning curve. So when Mike says, you know, the previous device had a, a version of Windows on it, this device has a version of Android. I mean, it's a very simple transition from one device to the other. I think so anyways. I, I don't know. What, what do you think, Mike? You're absolutely correct. And, and one of the things that we, we worked very hard to do when, when we were, um, you know, when the Polaris was being developed, um, you know, we wanted to keep it simple and we, you know, one of the things that we do not like to do and we don't have to is change the way that a user um, interfaces and interacts with a device because, you know, when you learn to do something and that's part of your workflow, that's how you do it. So we try to keep the devices as similar in operation as we can. Very cool. Well, you know what? Let's just uh, let's not talk about it anymore. No let's dive into it. Let's check out some applications. See what we can do with this bad boy. So, if you want to go, sounds ahead and... like a plan to me. So, I'm yeah. going to go ahead and share my screen. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to turn on my voice by pressing backspace F2. There's there's four function keys on the device. You've got F1, F2, followed by a, a control key, a space bar, and Alt key. And then you have F3, F4. And I kind of like to think about the Polaris kind of as a hybrid device, if you will, between a note taker and a computer. And one reason why I say that is because when you're in dialog boxes or you're going through applications, a lot of what you do is tab around, um, just as you would do on a PC running Windows. So just very quickly to just the F1 key, is what I think about, you know, it's like your start menu or your desktop key. Kind of takes you to the main menu of your, of your device. We call that the program manager. The F2 key is like an alt key. And what that does is it takes you into the menus of a running program. F3 is tab. If you want to do a shift tab, you would press space with F3 to go the other direction. And then F4 is like your escape key to exit out of a menu. So we'll, just to give you a quick little background there, so what I'm going to do is turn on my speech by pressing backspace with F2. Voice on. And I now want to oh, go... That's really clear. That's really nice. And, I, and we also have different voices that we can choose for the Polaris. Uh, right now, mine is set to Tom. There are female voices, male voices, whatever you like, different accents, British voices. Uh, there's also foreign language. We also have foreign language braille and speech support as well. I'm going to tab over to my share button. Now, I could, one thing that is really big on the Polaris, um, and I'm just going to quickly show this. I'm going to use Zoom to actually show this. I'm going to press tab. Jose Citron. Mike Tyndall. Were the speakers here? On Zoom, meeting information, button, your connection is encrypted, enter key to select. Button leave, press the enter key to run. Recording. Mute my audio, enter key to select. Start my video, enter key to select. Share, button, enter key to select. Participants, enter key to select. More, button, enter key to select. Current view is active speaker, double tap to hide toolbar. Jose Citron. So you can now see, what's the first thing I did when I went into that app, into this app? I tabbed around because I wanted to see what all of my options are. It would be just like a sighted person 
looking at their computer screen, what are my options in this app? So now I know what they are, so I can use first letter navigation. So for example, if I want to leave the meeting, I can press L, which I'm not gonna leave, but in case I want to quickly, I can, by pressing L. Button leave, press the enter key to run. It said leave, press enter to run. So if I wanna activate that button, I could press the letter L. Let's say I want to go to that more button that I heard. I would press M. Mute my audio enter key to select. M again. More button enter key to select. Okay. Now the buttons can also change. So I'm going to press M for mute. Mike, Mike Tindall. Mute my audio enter key to select. I'm going to press enter and then I'm going to, or actually I won't do it because it would mute my audio and you could even hear the speech <laughs> yeah, on the yeah, player. But, right but, but, if <laughs> yeah, but if I were to press enter on mute, the mute button would then be changed to the unmute button. So rather than pressing M, I would just simply press a U and I could unmute my, my audio. So at this point, I'm gonna press S a couple times until I find share. Now remember the first time I'm probably gonna hear start video. Start my video, enter key to select. There is a video camera on the bottom of the Polaris, but I thought you may be seeing a tabletop would not be very pleasing to your eyes and so. We're not doing video today. S again for share. Share, button enter key to select. I'm gonna press enter on this. Button photo enter key to select. So I can share different things, but what I wanna share is the entire screen all the time of the Polaris. So I'm gonna press the letter S to share my screen. Button screen enter key to select. And I'm gonna press enter. Zoom. So for those of you who are sighted, you can now see the, and I should have shared my screen from the beginning so that you could have seen all of those things I just did. Um, but if you, if, you, if you look at the cursor there, you'll see, for example, L to leave. App manager, app manager, zoom. Okay, so it took me out to my main menu. I pressed enter on Zoom just to go back into Jose Citron. Zoom. So now if I were to press L. Button leave, press the enter key to run. Or M to mute. Mute my audio, enter key to select. Or M again for more. More. Button enter key to select. I could do S for my stop video. Start my video, enter key to select. Stop share, button enter key to select. You see there was an example earlier, it was start share, now it's stop share. Yeah. So I want to now go to the main menu of the Polaris, and so I'm gonna press F1. I mentioned that key earlier. First key, oval shaped key on the left. File manager, F. And this now puts us at the file manager menu. So I'm just gonna quickly scroll down the menu and let you guys hear what the options are. And again, first letter navigation, certainly works in all of these menus. So you've got file manager. Word processor, W. Notepad, N. Email, E. Exchange email, L. Media, M. Organizer, O. Web tools, B. Extras, X. Utilities, U. Settings, S. Help, H. Play Store, P. All apps, R. Information about the BrailleSense Polaris, I. And that's the bottom of the menu. Information about the BrailleSense Polaris. So remember, guys, you know, like Mike was saying earlier, this is running on the Android platform. So like you saw and you heard right there, you have access to the Google Play Store where you have literally access to, what, 3 million-plus applications? Absolutely. And, and yes, and for those, those apps that are accessible, uh, you, certainly can, you certainly can run, download, and install any app that you want try it see if it works um all of the apps that you install would be found under all applications now for those of you who are familiar with note takers in general one of the commands that we all use and they're all the same across the board no matter what you use is top of file so i'll do an l chord space with l file manager f bottom of file space four five six Information about the Braille Sense Polaris, I. And I was moving with a dot one chord or a dot four chord to scroll me up and down. That works across the board, you know. So as I mentioned earlier, all these, you know, note taker commands, a lot of them are very similar in nature. Now, you do have a notepad and a word processor. I quickly just want to mention that the notepad is primarily for writing BRF, 
which are braille files mm -hmm. that students are just going to write and read kind of for their own notes or their, their, you know, their, their pen and paper, in other words, yeah. or the, um, the word processor. It's kind of where you would write a DOCX file and you can kind of do, you know, more fancy things in the formatting of that file and so on. I'm going to open the word processor by pressing W. Top of document. That's all I did. It now jumped me at the top of my file. And I'm going to <clears throat> go into the menu of the Polaris because what I want to quickly do is write a little bit of math. We support both Nimeth and UEB math. And um, I'm going to show you that in a moment, but I'm going to press F2 here. File, F, pull down menu. And I'm going to go down to settings. Edit, E, insert, up, go to, G, read, R, layout, L, file, F, pull and down edit, menu. And settings is in file, so I'm going to press enter on file. New, N, dialog, enter, and menu item. Type in. Open, O, save, F, save as, export, F, print, P, settings, E, dialog, enter, e, menu, settings, dialog. View format characters, F, no list item. We're in a list item here, so I can scroll down. Reading unit, read only, automatic save in, auto scroll speed, apply settings to all the home and move unit, new document name, math code, T, name at list item. You heard that say math code T, so I could have pressed the letter T, but I wanted you to hear some of the options there. Math code is Nimeth. If I press the space bar here, UEB list item. I can Ooh, I change like it to UEB. So what in Florida right now, Jose, I know it's kind of different across the country, but uh, in Florida, are you guys using more UEB or more Nimeth code? Yeah, so they're, they're starting to transition kids to doing uh, UEB, bro. Uh, most people who are using Nimeth these days are going to be like people like you and I, where you know, we were taught back in the day <laughs> we were learning Braille, but a yeah. lot of schools now are doing UEB Braille. They're doing UEB. Yeah. So I'm going to press enter on UEB and I'm going to change my grade here to UEB. Option save blank. So I am now, my math grade is set to UEB. So I'm just going to type my name. Dot six. N R K D D H Oops. H H well, H E. There we Mike. go. Dot six T I F D E L Tyndall. Dot six at it R S is G G G R T great T O two B E B dot H here with with A K L A K S L K L L all of Y U T D lower today. So you can see there I'm typing in contracted braille for those of you who have vision. You can see on the screen the symbol. Um, I typed my name. I typed things like it with an X here dot five H with of you TD for today. Typing in contracted braille. End of document today. Enter. And so a student can literally type all of their assignments. And for the most part, vision teachers do not have to transcribe, um, you know, students daily work i remember back when i was a kid in public high school and you know doing um honors classes i would turn in stacks of paper <laughs> and my provision teacher to transcribe them and i know when i got my first braille and speak she was quite happy that those days were kind of oh, over man. i remember the braille and speak <laughs> uh -huh, absolutely absolutely <laughs> So I'm going to just quickly show you a little bit of math. I'm going to do backspace with M. Start UEB mode. And we'll just type number sign. Number sign. Five. five in plus. Plus. F. F. Number six. Six. Indicator. Equal. Number sign. One. one five plus six equal eleven. Eleven. Okay. So I can do that kind of thing in my device and it will actually show up as 5 plus 6 equals 11. I could do the same thing if I were writing in Nimeth code. So I'm going to do a Z chord and I'm going to I'm going to not save this file. Actually before I do that I'm going to 
Yeah, we're going to do it this way. Backspace with, uh, I mean, a Z core to save. No name dot doc save. Yes, prompt button. I'm going to say in for now. Word processor, W. I'm going to hit enter again on the word processor. Top of document. And I'm going to press, now that we know all the commands, I'm going to press F2. File, F, pull down menu. Enter on that. New, N, dialog T for, menu item. File open settings, dialog. Open mode, O, load in background list item. Blank. No name, dot doc, save, blank. File, F, pull down menu. New, and. We're going to go to settings. File, file name. Mark doc docs, path of flash, file name, no name, blank. No name, dot docs, save, yes, prompt button, word processor. Done. All right, we're going to press, and on the word processor. Top of document. We're going to press F2. File, F, pull down menu. We're going to press enter on file. New, N. Dialog enter and menu item. Now I'm going to go down to settings. Open. Save. Save as export. Print. P. Settings. E. Dialog enter menu item. Settings dialog. View format characters. F. No list item. And we're going to type T. Math code. T. U. E. B. List item. And I'm going to cheat and I'm going to use Nimeth because I know that code a lot better. Nimeth list item. <laughs> Dr. Nimeth was actually truly like a grandfather to Option me. Option save. Blank. Actually. And so, yeah, there's a lot of history behind that but so now we're just going to jump in here so backspace with them start name mode play and we're going to do x squared x x2 x superscript p equal equal one one two y superscript y squared and i'm going to graph this so i'm going to do um inner backspace with g x superscript two equal y superscript two X superscript two equal Y superscript two, one slash one list item. And what that actually did is it brought up our Polaris math application. And one of the nice things about it is uh, right now I have mine set to UEB. So I'm actually looking at this in UEB. And if I, if I wanted to go and look up a symbol, for example. Symbol picker, backspace S, dots two, three, four, list item. If I press enter here. Set math code, backspace G, dots one, two, symbol picker, backspace S, dots two, three, four, list item. Help closed. X superscript two equal Y superscript two. One slash one list symbol picker dialog. Basic function one slash three list item. So we have basic functions. Trigonometry two slash three miscellany three slash miscellany three slash three list basic function. I think we're going to be basic item. here. Equal seven one slash thirty list item. So I see equal is a uh, dot five below G. Plus six two slash thirty list item. Plus, and it, I, it's saying six. It's not speaking it correctly, but I'm reading my braille display. I see that plus is a dot five, followed by a dropped f. So if I, I so so it, the point here is is that if I do not know what a math symbol is, I can look it up. X superscript two equal Y superscript awesome. two. One so, slash one. So item. Mike, once a, a student is doing their math assignment and they have that filled out, they save it. You know, with the current situation, a lot of students aren't in the classroom these days. So, I mean, how do they share with their teachers or their professors? What, what do we do with our work if we're not printing it out and handing it in? Sure, sure. Let me let me get there. So very quickly, I'm just gonna. Um, so you see that we we have our we have our file here. We have a little graph, and I'm gonna insert that graph into my document by doing enter with G. Successfully inserted math graph. Now we're not gonna show it today for the sake of time, but we can also. Uh, get a tactile image of our graph. We can do lots of different things. 
with our graph. But I'm just going to save this file. No name. Dot doc save. Yes, prompt button. File save dialog. File name. No name. Dot doc setter com F L O R I D A Florida R E A D I N G Saving. Save complete. X superscript two equal Y superscript two one slash one list item. So I'm going to close this out with a Z chord. So now that we have the file saved, I am now going to go up to my file manager by pressing the letter F. Flash disk one slash two list item. And I'm going to find the file that we saved. It's in my documents folder on the flash disk. The flash disk is the internal drive of the Polaris. So I'm going to press enter. Books folder one slash ten list item. And I'm going to press the letter D for documents folder. Daisy folder two slash ten list item. D again. Documents folder three slash ten list item. I'm going to press enter here. Training materials folder one slash twenty one list item. And I'm going to press the letter F for the file that we saved, Florida Reading. Florida Reading doc doc seven slash twenty one list there item. There it is. Now I'm going to press enter with C to copy this to my clipboard. Copying. Florida Reading doc doc seven slash twenty one list item. And I'm going to backspace until I hear flash disk. Documents fold flash disk one slash two list item. And the easiest way to get this to a teacher is by using Google Drive. So I'm going to do a dot four chord. Google Drive two slash two list item. Because we actually have Google Drive integrated into the file manager. So I'm going to press enter on Google Drive. Training materials folder one slash three list item. And I have a folder in here called math, so I'm going to type an M. Math folder two slash three list item. I'm going to press enter. No items list item. And I'm going to press enter with V to paste the file. Uploading. Zero, 100 percent sign. Done one files uploaded. So the file is now in my Google. Dot docs one slash one list item. The file is now in my Google Drive folder. My teacher can see it now. For time's sake, we're not going to actually do this, but I can tell you that if I were to press enter on this file. I can edit the file, and then when I save it again, because the file is originating now from Google Drive, the Polaris will automatically save my file and upload directly to the Google Drive. So all of the files are here, they're safe. I can see them, I can edit them, I can do whatever I want. Or as I mentioned earlier, another way to uh, get the work to my teacher if I am not using Google Drive is I can simply email the attachment to a teacher. And I'm, I'm not physically going to do it, but I'm just going to show you. Um, if I do, a, I'm sitting on my on a, this, this file, I'm going to hit backspace. Math folder 2 slash 3, Google Drive 2 slash 2 list item. Flash disk one slash two list item. Enter. Books folder one slash ten list item. And I'm going to go down to my documents folder. Daisy folder two documents folder three slash training materials folder one slash twenty one list item. We'll type F for Florida reading. Florida reading doc doc seven slash twenty one list item. That file is now highlighted. So I'm going to press F2, which is my menu key, alt key on the Polaris. File F pull down menu. If I press enter on file. Open. Internal menu item. I can scroll down to send to. Zip X, send to, S, dialog, enter S menu item. Send to dialog. Target flash disk one slash four list item. Email two slash four list item. Exchange email three slash four list item. Android program four slash four list item. Those are my different names. I could choose email. And email That's two so slash cool. four uh, list uh, item. Mike, we got a, a question in the chat. So, you know, two options that you just came across was email and exchange. Can you go ahead and describe what's the difference? Yeah, so the difference is actually servers, and a lot of people in the corporate environment, they use Exchange email. Another example is Microsoft 365. They also use Exchange email. Basically, what the Exchange email does is it allows you to have email kind of like IMAP on multiple devices, and whatever you do to one device, it happens to your mail across all of your devices. So for example, if I were to delete a, a, an email from my Polaris, 
if I go to that same account on my phone or my laptop, the same file, the same email would be deleted. Uh, if I were to move files, say, from my inbox to a specific email folder that I've created, all of it would happen across all my devices. So it's just a very easy way to keep your information organized. And for people who are in corporate environments and they're using Exchange email, it allows them to now access their email, which they could not do before on the Polaris directly. That is so cool. So, I mean, guys, you saw how easy that was, right? He made his, his math document. He saved it. He found it. He had the ability to save it up to his Google Drive folders. He has the ability to go ahead and email it, um, whether it's regular email or through an exchange. I mean, there's so many things that you can do with this device. I mean, I'm guessing if you wanted to, you could probably download the Dropbox app or any other type of cloud service application and, and save it to there as well? Absolutely, yes. And, and you know, you would actually use the Dropbox app, for example, to do that. Or, you know, if you, if you would prefer using the Google Classroom app, you can also do that. Um, you know, the OneDrive app, uh, many, many apps that we Very support. Cool. Um, absolutely. Very cool. Very cool. Very good stuff. So, you know, so again, this is a device that we can use for educational purposes. We're able to use it for professional purposes. But what about someone who just wants to use it for leisure purposes? Like what if you're at home and I don't know, you're quarantined and maybe you want to listen to music or, you know, find something to entertain yourself. What can we you do know, for and for copyright, so we don't get, you know, thrown out. I'm not really going to go into a lot of depth, but I, I, I will quickly show you if I press a for all apps right now, I'll go out of here. Z chord sent to canceled. Florida reading doc docs, file manager F. If I type in A for all music, or all apps rather. Apple Music. My first app here is Apple Music. So if I were to press enter. Very cool. That's super cool. So guys, remember, he's on an Android device right now. And using the Apple Music application to listen to content off his Apple Music subscription. So if I were to go into my library here. Button only show music on this device. Enter key to select. Switch off. Press the enter key to toggle. Cast button. Disconnect it. Enter key. button. Search enter key to select. Button more options. Enter key to select. List recently added. Enter key to select. List playlist. Enter key to select. List artist. Enter key to select. List albums. Enter key to select. List songs. Enter key to select. List TV, ampersand, movie play heading, e heading. Alabama explicit enter key to select. Alan Jackson explicit enter key to select. Now for some reason all of these say explicit. I don't know why, but for example, if I press enter here on Alan Jackson. See more by Alan Jackson enter key to select. Library enter key to select. For you enter key to select. Browse enter key to radio enter key to playing any day now enter key. Button and how are you doing that, Mike? Key. How are you navigating through? I'm just tabbing. I'm pressing my tab button. Yes. Nice. Button dash track enter key to select. Annotation button enter key to select. Stop share button enter key to button navigate up enter key to select. So if I wanted to play, you know, any song on here, um, all I would have to do, and again for copyright purposes, we're not going to do it. But if I were to press enter, you heard the play button. I can simply just play whatever I want to play. Very cool. um, I can do searches. I can, I can not only search from my local library, but I can also search from all of Apple Music. Um, wow. You know, but there are many, many other things out there that work. Disney Plus now works. Nice. Um, nice. I've been a big we've fan got, of that lately. You know, we've got, <laughs> and a lot of their movies are audio described. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, we've got many, many, I mean, you know, it's kind of, and the endless what you can really do with this device. Very cool. Very cool. I mean, that's so cool, guys. And, you know, um, uh, let's see, we have, we have a question in the chat that's asking uh, about the operating system itself. Um, someone's writing that they know that the operating system is older. Um, so, Mike, what would you tell them to, uh, for them not to be discouraged with, with this type of device? What I would tell people is, you know, we have access to Google. We have access to their apps, their security apps, their databases. We monitor progress as far as what's going on. 
um, with different versions of Android. And when we see that, you know, we need to do something, um, we're going to do it. But at this point, um, you know, we are running Lollipop as the version of um, Android that we're using. And, you know, when you think about what an operating system is running, it doesn't really matter what operating system. I mean, is there an operating system in your washer or dryer? There's something that makes today's modern appliances work. I mean, there are physical computer components in there, but we don't care. They work. And, you know, don't get caught up on, you know, if somebody grabs an iPhone, do you immediately go and say, oh, what version is on here? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. I mean, as long as it works, it does what you need it to do. It doesn't necessarily matter that you're not running the latest operating system. And again, if we see a reason to, 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 to need to do something different, we certainly will. We are keeping an eye on it. And, you know, um, that's where we are. Very cool. Now, I know I asked this question earlier about the QBRAL XL, but does this device support one-handed mode? It absolutely does, yes. Good. Good. Very cool. Well, Mike, I appreciate the demonstrations that you brought here today. Uh, I mean, do you have anything you want to share with our, our listeners and our viewers? I just want to say to all of you, uh, you know, thank you for joining us today. I appreciate um, – you inviting me and allowing me to come on your uh, your your Our webinar show. <laughs> I, you Zoom with us. I love it. Zoom with us. And um, you know, I, I again this whole virtual concept. You know, I, I I just think it's amazing that you know back in the day I would hop on a plane and fly to Florida, and um, you know I certainly want to do that again. So you know we will return back to normal, and I. I, I've always loved the state of Florida. Um, so, you know, we will see each other again. Um, do you have any other announcements that you want to make? Um, I don't, but from what I understand, Hims does. So go ahead and, and share the news that Hims is currently doing for their Bell devices. All right. Well, I was going to let you do that, but I'll be happy to. So, <laughs> so through the end of June, and I have talked to uh, – Lisa Kreshmer, and, um, you know, I know that you guys are, are, are very excited about what we're doing as well. Um, through the end of June, we are actually uh, including in the purchase price of a Polaris, Polaris Mini, or Cube Rail, we are including in the purchase price a product maintenance agreement, and what that does is it extends your warranty for an extra year, as well as it gives you the ability to send in your device for one free Braille display cleaning. Anything that goes wrong with your device under warranty, we will certainly take care of that. I mean, it's taking you from a, from a you know, one-year warranty up to a two. But the nice thing about the product maintenance agreement, as long as you have an active product maintenance agreement, we give you one accidental repair. So that means, let's say that you've kept your maintenance agreement going every year, so we're giving you the first one for free, and then let's say you buy it, you know, next year and then the next year. Anytime during that time, if you spill Coke or pop or sweet tea or wine or coffee or literally your machine, you know, someone steps on it, whatever. One accidental repair, we are going to cover that repair under your product maintenance agreement as long as it is active. So you can't have the maintenance agreement for, say, the year that we give you, and then if you choose not to buy it the next year and during that next year you have an accident, unfortunately that's on you. But if you keep the product maintenance alive, we give you one accidental repair. Um, you know, as long as that PMA is active, 
I do not have the exact price of the product maintenance agreement, but I think it's around like $700 a year. And that's not very expensive because when you think about the, the, the Braille cells in these devices, if you have to send in your display and it has to get, you know, major work, you're looking at easy $1,000 for repair. So I always urge people who can have a product maintenance agreement. And then we're also offering an hour of free training. So someone like myself from HIMSS um, would, would talk to you and, and, and get you up and running, um, or Jose, for that one hour of free training um, that comes with every new Braille device through June 30th. That's, that's big, you know, because, you know, I always tell people, any device that they give to us, you know, obviously we provide free training. But now that you're going to get free training from Florida Vision Technology, you know, your first few hours are going to be free. And then you're also going to have a, an hour of um, a representative's uh, time from PIMS, so, uh, someone like Mike Tyndall or whoever's going to do their training. So, I mean, that's, that's big news. That's big news. That's awesome. Very cool. And the, you know, again, that product maintenance agreement, I mean, we, we have never actually run a promotion like this before. And I'm really happy that we're able to bring it to you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when you do these training sessions, these one hour long training sessions, are you doing face to face? How are you doing this remotely? We're doing it remotely. Um, and it will be a remote training. I should mention that. Um, I, I can't obviously hop on an airplane even in good times and just fly to see one person. But, um, <laughs> but um, you know, we are doing, I'll do it via the phone. That's the typical way that I do it. Um, if it was a teacher and a student, I'd be happy to do it with Zoom. Um, you know, whatever works. I'm totally flexible. So we'd do whatever works for you. Very cool. Very cool. Well, guys, I think we're going to wrap this up for the day. Mike, you got any last words you want to share with our audience? It's a pleasure uh, being here. Again, I want to thank all of you for taking the time out of your day to be at Zoom with us. I, I like that. Zoom with us. Um, you know, it almost sounds like a workout. You're like a spin, like spin Zoom. Yeah. Zoom with us. I love it. Or maybe a car race, you know. But um, great to be here. It's always fun to work with you, Jose, and, and, and Florida Reading and Vision. Um, it's, 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 it's just great to um, be a part, and thank you so much for having us. Awesome. Well, we appreciate you joining us today. Anyways, guys, that's Mike from Hims. I'm Jose from Florida Vision Technology, and we are signing out.